Lake Annecy is one of the cleanest lakes left in Europe. It, it's pure emerald clear water. It's very magical. So Annecy is in uh, the south of France, close to the Alps, one of the most beautiful places that you could ever see. Cobblestone streets, arched doorways. It really gets into your spirit and your emotions. It's considered the Venice of the Alps. The water that rushes through it, that river splits through the town. It's a very enchanting place. There's a part of my heart that was left in Annecy. When I would arrive in Annecy from the train station, I would always walk up to the monastery. That was a great experience in itself. The cloister nuns, they do not interact with the public. They live their life behind walls. Life is simple, dedicated to prayer, living a spiritual life, totally. Their rooms are called cells, not, not rooms. There they are, in, up in a monastery with these tall walls, and they don't even get to go out and see the town, unless there's a doctor's appointment or something. They don't even get to see all that beauty. I did think that it was a lonely life, but it's not so within that community. They live a very uh, close sisterhood in their community. They're not lonely. Time spent in France and, and with the nuns actually became an experience deeper than I ever thought. Anne Helen is my father's sister. She was born in Wheeling, West Virginia survived the Depression, had a close family. She went to um, Mount de Chantel. It was the visitation order school for girls. She spent a lot of time there, so she became very close to those sisters. I remember as a little girl going to visit her and wondering why she was behind the bars. But then it was also mysterious. So Anne Helen went to France to study French and music to come back and teach. She went to Annecy because that's the mother church. And it became clear to her that that's where she wanted to be for the rest of her life. away just shy of her 85th birthday. So she was a close cloister nun for over 60 years. I think after her funeral, it really was solidified of 
yes, that this is what I need to do. I need to work through this. To do that, I had to have more than just the photography. I had to paint it out, and that was uh, an expression and an emotion. And it was also part of the mourning process for me. I felt close to her, and I still do. after the photograph is taken, then it goes to sepia. I like to work on that black and white, both. And then after that, it's going to come a couple coats of varnish. I'll, I'll seal it. Nothing's done on this one yet at all. This is kind of how it starts. It's either straight black and white or with the sepia to it. This is inside one of the oldest churches in Annecy. This one is just just starting on it. And there's the texture laid out on it. Here and there, here and there, putting the texture down with the ashes and then in glazes and layers and glazes and layers, it'll build itself up. The images spoke more than a flat, one-dimensional surface. So I started thinking of what other layers I could put onto it, besides oil paint, ashes. That was more of a happy mistake. And then after the funeral, it was perfect thought about even the spiritual life of how we are ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It, that also evolved. Every happy mistake was probably something that was really just meant to be. The interior, I guess you'd call it the foyer of the monastery. Over here's the family quarters. This is where we always stay walk across here and then we would visit with Aunt Helen up in here. Now these crosses, since they have the vow of poverty, they don't even own these. It's part of their profession. They have these and inside these crosses are relics of the saints. A piece of the cross or a nail, um, hair, clothing. This is one of the largest pieces. This was the procession after um, the funeral, Anne Helen's funeral. Sister Marguerite Marie. That was a huge heavy cross. It was a gloomy day, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. The very end the sun came out. <laughs> to open up your heart is a very vulnerable place. But what's given me courage and confidence with this body of work is that it's not about me. It's telling a story about a great community of women that are strong and courageous. I admire their humility and everything about them.